Hi, welcome back to my channel. AWS and GCP provide impressive cloud data warehouse solutions, Redshift and BigQuery. Each of these solutions can run analytic queries against petabytes to exabytes of data with a highly scalability, cost-effective, and secure. I will compare the two solutions today, and you can choose the option based on your use cases. Both AWS Redshift and GCP BigQuery are petabytes scale, columnar storage data warehouses. They are specially designed for online analytical processing OLAP and business intelligent applications. In this video, I will just summarize both the solutions architectures. You can review my course of Redshift, also the Redshift architecture overview and the BigQuery architecture overview videos from my channel for the details. AWS Redshift fully managed data warehouse solution is based on the Postgres SQL but beyond just the Postgres SQL. The core infrastructure component of AWS Redshift Data Warehouse is a cluster. A cluster is composed of one or more computer nodes. The client application interacts directly only with the lead node. Inside each computer node, it is partitioned into slides. Redshift reduces I.O. through columnar storage, data compression, and massively parallel processing MPP. AWS Redshift also introduced the Redshift Spectrum that directly performs SQL queries on data stored in the AWS S3 bucket. This can save the time and the money without moving data from the storage service to the data warehouse. BigQuery's architecture is different from a traditional node-based cloud data warehouse solution or massively parallel processing MPP systems. BigQuery's serverless architecture decouples storage and compute and allows them to scale independently on demand. From the user's standpoint, with the serverless service, users do not have the visibility or control over the individual servers or cluster of servers. BigQuery has two services, storage service and query service, that are collected by Google's high-speed Jupyter networking infrastructure. BigQuery storage service automatically shares and shares data in Google's cluster's underlying file system. The tables are stored as a highly compressed columns to provide durability and availability. The storage service supports bulk data ingest and streaming ingest. The query service runs interactive or batch queries. It integrates with other GCP data processing services through connectors. It can also run query jobs on data contained in the cloud storage. Under the hood, BigQuery leverages both the larger scale cluster manager system and Dremel, the execution engine for the services. Here is the summary of the architecture comparison I just went through. AWS Redshift and GCP BigQuery are both the platforms as a service in the cloud. Let's compare the features in the following areas. The first one is on infrastructure management. AWS Redshift is fully managed with automated provision and automated backup. GCP BigQuery is completely serverless. It separates storage and computing. In the programmatic interaction, AWS Redshift supports all languages with JDBC and ODBC. GCP BigQuery supports REST API, client libraries in Java, Python, Node.js, C Sharp, Go, Ruby, and PHP. On data ingestion, you can load the static data from AWS S3 EMR DynamoDB table and the remote hosts to AWS Redshift. You can load the streaming data using AWS Kinesis to the AWS Redshift. You can load the data from cloud storage, cloud data store backups, cloud data flow, and the streaming data sources to GCP BigQuery. You can use familiar data integration tools like Informatica, 
Thailand and others out of a box to the GCP BigQuery. On foundation for ML and AI, AWS Redshift uses machine learning to optimize its performance. The predictive analytics with AWS SageMaker is in preview at the time of this video. GCP BigQuery besides bringing the ML to your data with BigQuery ML, it also integrates with the AI platform and TensorFlow enable you to train powerful models on the structured data in the minutes with just SQL. I really like this feature in GCP BigQuery and looking forward to exploring the same feature in AWS Redshift. The next one is Result Caching. AWS Redshift uses Result Caching to deliver sub-second response times for repeat queries. GCP BigQuery writes all query results to a table, either a temporary cached results table without charge or a permanent table with a storage charge. The last one is on maintenance. AWS Redshift automatically runs the vacuum delete operation to reclaim disk space. GCP BigQuery uses the expiration settings to remove unneeded tables and partitions. The performance is tricky on all data warehouse solutions. It depends on the size of the data table, schema complexity, and the number of concurrent queries, etc. The different benchmarks show different results. I suggest you test with your benchmarks in both systems to compare the performance for your use case. Take the advantage of AWS Redshift's two-month free trial for the customer that has never created the Redshift cluster, and the GCP $300 credits with this free tier account at the time of this video. I did include the two different performance results links in my blog at the end of 2019 to show the different stories. You may want to search for some 2020 test results. Both data warehouse solutions provide very similar security features. On the access controls, both platforms leverage their IAM to set up roles and permissions. On the encryption at rest, both platforms leverage their key manager system to do the database encryption and server client-side encryption on the load data files. BigQuery supports encryption by default. Redshift also supports HSM. On data in transit, both platforms include a virtual private cloud with PC and SSL connections. On data lost provision, AWS DLP service mesh doesn't support Redshift at the time of this video. Google Cloud DLP service supports BigQuery. Now let's move to the cost comparison. AWS Redshift's pricing model covers both storage and computing costs. You can choose from the IA3 built on the AWS Nitro system with managed storage, dense compute, or dense storage nodes types. The cheapest node DC2 large with 160GB will cost you $0.25 cents per hour. Let's go to the AWS Redshift pricing calculator to calculate the cost and the Redshift service. Select one DC2 large load on demand, one terabyte additional backup storage, and a 10 terabytes Redshift spectrum. The total monthly cost is $256.05. You can pay up front for the discount. Well, GCP's BigQuery pricing model is another story. It is complicated based on active versus long-term, flat rate versus on-demand, streaming inserts versus queries versus storage API, different pricing model on BigQuery, BigQuery ML, BigQuery BI Engine, and BigQuery Data Transport Service. It separates the storage cost and query cost. Story cost is two cents per gigabyte per month and the query cost is $5 per terabyte. 
The storage is cheaper than AWS Redshift, but the query cost can end up quickly. Let's go to the GCP pricing calculator to play around the cost estimate. Let's try on demand with 10 terabytes storage, 10 gigabytes of streaming insert, and 1 terabyte of query. The total monthly cost is 200. $205.11, which is not bad. Now let's try flat rate with 50 slides, slots, 10 terabytes of storage, 10 gigabytes of streaming insert. Well, you cannot input 50 slots. Let's change it to 100 slots. The total monthly cost is 2000 $410.22. You can also do the cost estimate on BigQuery ML. Here is my personal conclusion. Both AWS Redshift and GCP BigQuery are highly scalable enterprise data warehouse solutions to make data analytics more productive. Both data warehouse cloud solutions take care of infrastructure management and database administration responsibilities. So you can focus on business needs, use familiar SQL. There are some differences between AWS Redshift and GCP BigQuery, but there are far more similarities from the user's standpoint. I like AWS Redshift Spectrum concept that is very similar to the external tables in the Oracle. Using AWS Redshift Spectrum, you can efficiently query and retrieve structured and semi-structured data from the files in the AWS S3 without having to load the data into Redshift. I'm impressed with the BigQuery's ML. You can use the standard SQL queries to create and execute machine learning models. It increases ML development speed by emulating the lead to move the data. From the cost standpoint, BigQuery's pricing model is unpredictable and complex on query operations. Redshift, on the other hand, is predictable, simple, and encourages data usage and analytics. But I think the BigQuery is much simpler to use with its completely serverless a in-memory BI engine, and a machine learning built-in. However, Redshift gives the level control over your data warehousing setup and performance tuning. So the correct decision depends on your user cases, cost, and performance benchmark. Thanks for watching, and as always, subscribe to my channel for more great cloud computing learning tips. See you next time.